and welcome to the Alternative Car Show with me, Charmaine Sinclair. And me, Neil Winnington. Right, this afternoon we're here at the West Hanger Car Show. Well, I just had to show you this one because a Corvette should always be in red. When I see a black one, it's just not happening. So this is a personal favourite of mine, a little red Corvette. So I just wanted to slip that into the show. I know you're not probably interested in that one, but uh, I had to show you. And we've got a Mustang here somewhere, so I'm going to have a little grab at that one too. So uh, I just wanted to show you that, and then I'll carry on with the show. Hi, I'm here with Henrika, fantastic name, and um, she's got a fabulous car here, and um, she's going to tell you a little bit about what she's done in it. Well, uh, one of the big events I went to, it was the Le Mans event. Wow. We have driven uh, two VIPs out, the organizers of Le Mans circuit. Fantastic. And uh, there were 10,000 people, and I was representing ladies. Wow, because, yes. <laughs> because usually the men driving cars and ladies don't. Exactly. So I thought someone has to represent ladies uh, as well. We, we can do the same as men can do. Of course we can. And <laughs> Girl power. <laughs> and then I've been to many events with the car. And uh, I love going to events. I've been to Salted Castle, where I went around the castle I've been invited to. This is the first time I'm uh, here in West Hanger Castle. Yeah, it's been beautiful invited. here, I'm, isn't it? I've spoken to the owner and I'm hoping to meet up with her again. And then uh, I've also been to events, one was at the Grand Hotel where the car won reward and I was representing with the Mayor of uh, Kent. Wow! So the car <laughs> has got a history. It has. But uh, as I said, I represent ladies. Brilliant. How long have you had the car for? Well this one, is, this is my second car, or really I should say third car. Oh. Previously it was 1953. <laughs> Uh, Morgan, then uh, four seater 1968, four seater, and then uh, this particular one is 2000. I've been a member of the Morgan Club, uh, Kenton Surrey Club, for 18 years now. Fantastic. Um, well, you keep going, you keep yes. representing us ladies. Yes, yes. <laughs> I need to do that. Yes, it's important absolutely because it's not many ladies do drive cars, and we can do the same as men can oh, do. Oh, we can. I think we're better. Yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. My you pleasure. enjoy your day. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. In the background behind me, we've got a lovely little Dutton Phaeton. Lovely. Been looking at it and I'm thinking, I could drive down the high street in one of them. What do you reckon? <laughs> right. Behind me is an M6 GTR. Now, I'm really excited because this car is very special. It's extremely rare and I was really, really pleased to see it here today. And now, the news. Phoenix Automotive Developments have taken over the Quantum Project. I went down to take a look. I'm with Rob Hancock from Phoenix Automotive Developments, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you've just taken on the Quantum Project, so it's a, a mark that's got a great history. It is. What's your plans for the for the for the business? Initially, um, there's a lot of old cars out there um, that their values have dropped beyond belief, really. Um, so initially, our plan is to get the values of those cars up by offering cheap panels and, and factory support for spares, um, as well as obviously offering new cars. As you can see, we've got a an old brand new shell here that's uh, going to be built um, and really get the enthusiasm back that the, the mark has sort of lost over the last couple of years. So, so that's, that's all promising, promising stuff. Hopefully. But, yeah. <laughs> As a quantum owner that sounds that's all music to my ears. Now I, I presume you know offering cheap panels is not a viable long-term business plan no. so I take it there'll be a sort of a, a, a cut-off point whereby we, we, we sort of work on bringing the values up. I know that there's members of the Owners Club are planning to work on bringing the values up and, and uh, in, ensuring them at a reasonable rate for the, for the work that actually goes into building them. So from Absolutely. the manufacturer's perspective, 
what what do you see as 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 the the, the time scale for for gradually bringing this up? I think over a, a fairly short period, if we can get the the values of the cars up, so people aren't selling for two hundred quid, they're selling for five, six, seven, eight thousand pounds, which is what they're worth. We that's, all know that, that's that what is worth. what they should be. Yes, um, a bang in a bumper here. If that was a thousand pounds, the car gets written off and goes to scrap. A bang in the bumper there, the car is worth £7,000, 800 to £1,000 pounds for a front end, the car gets repaired. While the car is only worth 200 quid, it gets thrown away, which is no good to anybody. We've got a pile of moulds, a barn full of moulds for all of these cars, that unless they're being used, they're worthless from a business point of view. From an enthusiast point of view, the cars need to look absolutely A1. Driving around in a scruffy car, no one looks at. And the extreme, obviously, there's still a market for those. There is. It's the extreme. We're doing panels for the extreme at the correct money. We're offering a small discount for people to upgrade to the new style. But uh, that car is pretty much holding its own. We're getting strong inquiries, um, both in the UK and abroad. So, uh, you know, that, that one, we're not, not too bothered about that car at the moment. Yeah. That's sort of ticking along nicely. And... For the record, what is the price for a an extreme kit for someone who is interested, as as I have you, captive audience? The old, the old price, I think, was seven nine nine five for for the comprehensive kit, which is what we're keeping it at. Which is which, which is, and and to remind people, that's a stainless steel monocoque, stainless steel chassis, monocoque chassis, and it's extremely well designed as well. We're talking about every single nut, bolt, screw, everything's been thought out on that Absolutely. chassis. It's a um, real just assembly job, isn't it, yes. that car? We've also developed a, 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 a lightweight and more streamlined wishbone set up, rose jointed, which is also TIG welded. So that brings the whole kit then into absolutely the top notch. Um, it, it's up there with, with the Ultimas. It is in terms of quality, in yes. In terms of quality, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, um, now in terms of uh, the saloons and the 2 plus and the H4 the H4 moulds went over to Iran so there's not a great yeah. deal you can do about we've, that we've got front end and we've got repair panels right so, so we can offer repairs we, we can we can get them back up to scratch right so, and, and we've got doors I do believe as well brilliant so. and the 2 plus and the saloon um, obviously because of the age of the donor cars it's not practical to offer them as kits no. but in terms of um, uh, restoration work they'll, they'll be you know that as you said 200 pounds is is, is madness yeah madness. so so um, is there going to you know I, I'm, I'm I've been talking to the owners club and and I think uh, down the line we're going to start a restoration project where we, we, we start buying the cars and selling them at the correct price and um, you know um, I think yeah. that's that's the way forward with those. That, that's something that the, the company could help out with So we would be keen to do so. So what's the story with the bumper? Okay this is the the bottom half of Eddie's development that we've grafted onto the uh, coupe and this will be available as a an upgrade option when it's finished we're taking moulds off and uh, hopefully at sensible money again to get people to upgrade and bring the cars a bit more up to date to remind people i can vouch for as as, as an owner of a saloon it really is something special there's only 215 of them so uh, how many two plus twos do you know that were made don't know we've but got a we haven't had a chance to go through the files yet. Yeah. Probably around the four hundred. So it's yeah, hard. there's a few more. So um, so so they're they're they're, they're again they're not fetching anywhere near the values. No, they're not. They should be. No. Yeah, and that's what needs to change. So uh, with with factory backup, so people can buy the parts because that's something else. If they've not been able to buy the parts for the last few years, people get despondent. They get a knock. They just put them in the corner and don't use them. They deteriorate and then they end up going really broken up for parts for the XR two bits. Yeah. So that that's, has to stop. Yeah. And also insuring them for £500 thinking they're going to save 50 quid on their insurance. What you save is a pound on your insurance and the insurance companies are rubbing their hands together because they will never pay out. Yeah. So they'll look at it and say, well, you've got £300 excess, um, here's £200 for your car. Yeah. Instead of saying, you've got a £300 excess, here's five grand for your car, 
which is what they should be saying. And then you can repair the car. Hi, this is Keenan, and uh, this is the reason this whole event has happened today. Um, he's a remarkable young lad. I couldn't believe when uh, I read up on him last night um, about he's only 17, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit what this whole event is about and uh, what it's in aid of. So this, this event is all in memory of my father, Gary Biddis. Uh, sadly, in 2013, he passed away due to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It's a really rare condition that affects the lungs and unfortunately they still don't know what causes the condition. Um, at first, after he passed away, I was thinking about maybe doing some sort of fun run or some sort of sponsored swim. Um, but I decided to carry on his love and passion for cars after building a Lamborghini Diablo, which I'm sure you're all going to see in the uh, in photos. And you can find, find pictures on our website and on our Facebook pages. Um, so what has this meant to you today? I mean, is it, you've had it on for two days. What's this meant for everyone turning up? Every, everyone turning up, it, it's been incredible. I didn't expect it to be quite this big the first year. We're looking at doing the event every year from now. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure your dad's going to be really, really proud of you. Excellent. Thank you very and, much. Uh, well done. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. I'm here with Doug and this is about the eighth time that I've tried to get this because aeroplanes and helicopters keep flying over but hopefully this time it will be all right. You can't rush these things you know, <laughs> it's always worth waiting for. Absolutely, so Doug you are the proud owner of this lovely car here. I am. Um, which you bought of Gary. I did. Who's uh, this whole events in aid of today. Yeah. Um, so you had a little story to tell me about what happened trying to get to the show yesterday. What, that story? Yeah, that yep, one. That, that one. I've heard about ten times. Ah, uh, yeah, but for the benefit of everyone else... <laughs> exactly. He's go going to tell again. you the story now. Okay, yeah. So we finished the car, we're ready for the show. Yeah. We're all loaded. Yeah. We're ready to rock. Unfortunately, the car had other ideas. Okay. <laughs> Picture the scene, six o'clock in the morning, sleepy dust in the eyes. Oh, God. In the car, nothing. 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 Loads Dead. of lights, just no turning. <gasps> So after a short uh, intermission of much colourful language, <laughs> we uh, which we, we can't say on here, no, by the way. No, we've got to keep that. Beep 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 beep, yeah, beep beep beep. The whole beep yeah. thing's not good. <laughs> what were the planes and the beeps? It's not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> so we found that the, st the start motor actually just decided to exit. Yeah. It's had its life. It's over. Thankfully, I have got a Range Rover with a very similar engine. Stole the start motor off of my Range Rover. <laughs> Put it onto my own game, and away it went. And it started. It started. Wow, well, well Everything done. Everything was good, but you know the whole dirt thing. You know you're eating dust, and I'm going to shoot that plane down myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got another plane. Cut. <laughs> right then. So tell us your name, please. Brian Ward. <laughs> He's been dying to get on camera. No, so. like rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, the last person who wants to be on camera. Now I was going to tell you the story. Where, but, yeah, well, I want to know the story. I've been waiting all day. Have you? Yeah. I believe you. I have. <laughs> I'm very gullible. Um, <laughs> what I was going to say was this. I had a Rolls Royce and it was a Silver Spirit. Quite a reasonably common car. It was in nice condition. It was 37 years old and a, a friend of mine took me up to Rolls Royce to look at cars. Okay. I thought, my God, this is a waste of time, too expensive, <laughs> I'll never buy anything here. But anyway, they said they would take mine in part exchange. Oh. And so I went round there, unbelievable size place. You drove through the showrooms. Really? Unbelievable, yeah. Oh my God. And this car stood on one side, and for all the Rolls Royces I know, yeah. I had never seen a silver door. Okay. Because it's a big minority, it's one of only 47 made. And then it turned out to be Countess Spencer's car, oh. the stepmother of Princess Diana. Wow. And they had photographs there of the two of them travelling in the car. Because at the end, well, because 97 was the last year of Diana's life. Yep. And they became good friends. If you saw the programme on television. I did, I did indeed. Where the car actually flashed across the screen. Oh, it? I'll have to go and watch it again. You should do, you should do. <laughs> Oh, well, brilliant. Well, now, you asked me something. <laughs> <laughs> when actually, is the bar open? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the condition of the whole thing, actually, in truth. Yeah. The quality of it is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a stunning it's, looking car. Well, it's the condition, though, as I say. If you look inside, uh, and it's like driving a brand new Rolls Royce. Welcome to sunny Yorkshire, proper cloth cap country. And I'm here to see something very special. 
I'm Craven Moses and this is the Two Rye Car One. Basically the Two Rye is the motorbike bolted into the headstock, taking the forks out and bolted in uh, to the back of the frame there. It's got some brackets at the back that fasten to the chassis, the frame of the bike and then there's uh, four radius arms that come down to where the foot pegs are and they're adjustable uh, so that you can track the bike up to get everything square when it's in situ. Uh, basically it's 90% of the bike, it's all there. You've just removed the forks, you move the uh, handlebar controls or the switch gear and the uh, clocks down to the front, the, the ignition switch, uh, and then chop the wiring harness, extend it and then plug it back in, into the original wiring harness and that's the wiring more or less taken care of. Basically, most of the parts come off the bike, it is the bike. The only thing that we've got is a Triumph Spitfire steering rack and the rest of it is all uh, comes in the kit with the steering column, homemade steering column, uh, all the brackets that you need and the suspension. Uh, we use golf hubs now for the, uh, the, the production one and the, this particular model I use the actual motorbike discs and uh, calipers but there's a lot of machining gone into to making that happen but if people like the idea of using all the bike which was one of my uh, ambitions at the beginning was to use all the bike being a Yorkshireman and all that I wanted to use it all up they are actually interchangeable so you could I could make that uh, so that you know you can have the motorbike discs and calipers if required uh, it's got the motorbike uh, wing mirrors we really do use all the bits up there's only really the the headlights that you need to buy in, the seats come with, with the actual kit. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically just some extra lighting. Because of the, the regulations, we can't just use the motorbike uh, rear lights, we have to have lights that are within 400mm of the outside edge, and you're allowed to put them uh, down, I think it's a halfway on the actual uh, uh, body. So I've put these uh, all in one units in, uh, basically they do all the indicators, stop lights and brake lights. And then what I find really uh, funny is the actual uh, reflectors that we use. Uh, they're actually mounted on the front of the back of the rear uh, mud guards. It seems daft that you have your uh, rear reflectors that far forward. <laughs> and how much is the kit actually going to be? for The, the kit? Uh, is is uh, four thousand five hundred, and for get for that you get the whole the frame, the suspension, uh, and all the body body panels you see, including the seats. Uh, you more or less uh, once you've got the kit, uh, you need the motorbike. Uh, then you've just got some wheels and three tyres to buy. There isn't much to buy, to be fair. After, after you've got it, because the bike you're using ninety percent of the bike, which. Uh, makes it easy to register the actual trike uh, through DVLA on the original registration of the motorbike because it, it is still there, you can still see it. So what's your background and how did this car come about? Well I'm a, a tool maker, I've got my own little engineering business uh, and basically I've got a bit, kids are grown up or growing up and I've got a bit more free time uh, and it's just a culmination of all the skills that you acquire from being young right up to present day and that's that's it really it's, it's just a case of I had time I had the time mainly and then it was just a case of designing a car for myself uh, wasn't sure at the start what it was going to be uh, but it's just the hill climbing background that I have with a single seater with the Yamaha engine in uh, I just knew it, need, knew it needed to be lightweight uh, and it was designed from a, a clean piece of paper really, for up oh, sort of thing. After seeing one or two cars, uh, in particular one which was a, a green Kawasaki uh, that had a, uh, basically had a Caterham type front with a Kawasaki engine, uh, motorbike bolted into the back. And that just sort of really got me thinking. And the, th the fact that uh, using open diffs like my racing car has with uh, uh, the chain drive, it's never a really good engineered thing for anything that's going to do any, any mileage, it's sort of like high maintenance. So just doing, just going to three wheels made it all simpler and it also made it lightweight, you're cutting a lot of weight out, so that was, that's the way I went forward with it. So it was, a, it was a pure case of logic. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you just start, you know, when you're working out what you've got to do. Uh, yeah, and I was looking at sort of like Westfields and Catrums, and I want to make one of them from scratch because I thought I could make a good one of those. But with no disrespect, you know, there's, there's lots of them about, you know, and I just fancy something different, really. So, how, did you just get a load of tubes and start bending, or did you, did, how did you go into the design? Was it sort of a paper exercise or a, a physical exercise? Uh, well, basically, I, I just really, I know the, th the, the pitfalls of starting a project and just starting to make it, just going into your garage and making it. You get one bit that looks right, and another bit that looks okay, put them together, and it looks a bit of a Frankenstein job. So I knew that whatever I was going to make, I wanted to have a look at it first. And if I, if I was, uh, uh, what I'd really like to do is learn 3D CAD, and you could have made a model of it, and, and you know, it would have been spot on, you could even take the data off that to actually make the panels. But being an old-fashioned sort of guy, I made the model. Well, that was the fantastic Two Reich from Yorkshire. If you want some more information, go to tworeich.com or look up the Tworeich Facebook page and we'll put those details below the video in the description. Hi, I'm still here at the car show. Now, I couldn't leave without coming and looking at my other favourite car, which of course is the Mustang. The Corvette and Mustang, um, it's a toss up between, but I think the Mustang just nips it. So uh, I just wanted to show you that here and uh, I'm going to carry on and see what else we've got here. So I'll catch up with you later. Okay, I'm with Judd and Karen, and if you'd like to tell me a little bit about your, your car, which I, I, I found you at a car show, tell me a little bit about your car. It's a Reliant Fox pickup. They made them from 1983 to 1990, 600 were made was a various of combinations of options you could buy which was the van, the estate, the convertible, camper van, the Reliant Fox Tandy and the canvas back. Yeah. It was actually made for the Greek farmers and it made over 3,000 and then the Greek government said, no more. So Reliant took it back, paid £500,000, invested in it, put 12 inch wheels on it, and put a skirt on the front for aerodynamics. Nah, I can't say that one. Aerodynamics. That's the one. <laughs> so you actually all bought them as a pickup. You bought them as a pickup, and everything was optional. So all the extra body styles were optional to go on to the pickup to yes. create different styles? Yes. So how did you get involved with Foxes? Because I know you're a real enthusiast, you've got another one as well. I was looking for my wife for a little car to learn to drive in and I seen a Reliant Kitten and she went, you, won't, you can buy it but you're not driving that. So I kept looking and looking and we seen this one which went out like that. So that's how it came about. First of all, we were looking for the Reliant Kitten. And then we got this one. That's very similar to our story because my father was looking for a car for my mum to learn to drive in and we did get the kitten. So it's, <laughs> but, but this is like the forgotten Reliant because everyone knows about the, the Robin. Everyone knows about the scimitar. A few people know about the kitten, but the fox is one that escapes. And they're getting rare now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, this one at the back of us is 1986. And there's 18 registered at 86. And I think there's seven on the road. Seven on the road now? Yeah, 86 model. Oh, of the 86 model? Yeah. So, so how many foxes in total? It's about 60, did you say, that are still on the road? They're both 60 on the road. And there was 600 made? 600 made. So out there somewhere there's a load of foxes yeah. waiting to be discovered and saved. It's one of the things on our channel that we... Yeah, that's, that's it. They're, they're, good little, they're good little, um vehicle. And you've done some beautiful customization because you've done it subtly. There's the wheels and... 
What have you added yourself? I've not had nothing, I bought it like that. You bought it like that? I bought it like that. But it's beautifully customised because it's tasteful, isn't it? It's not over the top. And you've got another another fox as well. Yes. So if you got this for your wife to learn to drive. <laughs> Why well, I got the, the other one? Yes. Have you, is it I sort of like you've fallen in love with them? All oh, right. It was for Spurs. But my friend John Tilly said it was too good. So that's on the road. Yeah. That's the 1984. Right. So you're going to keep the two of them on, on yeah. the road? They're both on the road now. Yeah. It's actually, they're actually classed as a commercial vehicle. So, from the perspective of somebody unlike us who doesn't know about the cars, you've got a little 850cc engine, yeah. rear wheel drive. Yeah. They handle really nicely as well, which is something people don't know. I know from the kitten, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, it's never going to rust because it's got a GRP body, steel chassis, and galvanized, galvanized steel chassis. And you're talking about, is it 50 to the gallon, something like that? Well, we put 10 litres in the other day, and we've done 121 miles. Because the fuel gauge is, is funny. <laughs> so, every time it goes to half, we fill it back up, and it takes 10 litres to fill it back up. Yeah. We don't look at the pounds, we just put the litres in. Yeah. And then I know, I've got fuel. <laughs> But it's not an expensive. Mile. It's not an expensive car to run, no. is it? No. So, for all the, anyone out there who's got a, 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 who knows where there's a fox, save it, get it back on the road. Oh yeah, definitely. They're worth it. It's a shame to see them. They should be on the road, not not garaged up. And these get used all year round. Yeah. Well, it's not. It, like I said, it's it's the perfect classic car. It's not going to rust, is it? Exactly. So. But like like I said to you, they shouldn't be stored away. They yeah. should be out on the road. Yeah. But it was actually made for the green farmers. Hi, I'm here with Ray, and uh, he's going to tell us all about this lovely car. So Ray, how long have you had it for? A uh, very short time, actually. I've had it about six months. Six months. So yeah. what made you get it? Uh, it's rough and ready, like me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, have you always been into these sort of cars? Oh, I love them. Yep, yep. Always, so always fancy them. one. Always wanted to have one. Okay, I've got so tell one. me a bit about it. What is it? It's a Chevy, Chevy step size. Yeah. Uh, three one hundred, four litre petrol, straight six. Okay. Um, gas guzzler. <laughs> gas guzzler, love Jump, that. Jumps along the road <laughs> from pothole to pothole. <laughs> So uh, did you buy it like this or have you done anything to it? No, it's basically as it is. It's as it is, you bought it exactly like this? Yep, very original. Okay, well let's have a walk around. Have a look at the rest of it. Let's see if we can open Down, down. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. How does it drive? Uh, like an old 50s uh, Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> Slow, uh, but enjoyable to drive. Let's have a look. So, do you have the kids here in the back? <laughs> no, I use it for work. Do you really? For work people, yeah. Do you actually go to work in this? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Fantastic. So does like everyone up. stare at it a lot? Yes. Do they? Yeah, everybody says, what are you doing picking up scrap metal and get it from to like this? Yeah, it is. It's a stunning car. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing that with me today, Ray. <laughs> very nice to have met you. Right, David, um, we're here today with this stunning car, so tell me a bit about it, how long you've had it for. I bought it in 1984. Wow. How many years is that? About 38. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very good. That's very good. Is that correct? I don't know. <laughs> it was just a it's, guess. And I had hair. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Time has moved on. Oh, so it's a Bristol 411 okay. Series 3. Yep. First owner Trevor Howard, the actor. Wow. And it's all made of aluminium, hand built. It has a giant chassis on it of 1200 welds. Wow. And I suppose it was the price of a couple of houses when it was new. Really? Mm -hmm. That much? Yes. Wow. So have you uh, had to do any work with it over yes, the years? Yes, it was, it was a, a metallic grey when I bought it with a tinge of pink in it. Oh, okay. But after about 12 years, 
I just wanted to change. Okay. A bit like your yeah. wallpaper and etc. <laughs> you know, I bought it for five thousand pounds in those days. Wow. I've spent about fifteen thousand on it over the years, but. Um, so how much is it worth now? I don't know. They do say that Bristol owners don't uh, talk about money. Do you know? But it's about eighty thousand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we don't yeah. want to talk about that at all. No. <laughs> Here, where yes. um, you said you put your sandwiches, but it's the spare wheel. That's the that spare wheel. Absolutely fantastic. And on the other side is twin servos and the battery. Oh, okay. And all fantastic. the and all the um, fuses. Okay. Fuse so, button. do you think you'd ever get rid of it, or is this no. your pride and joy? Oh, no. <laughs> no, but they do say everything has its price. But oh, okay. I think they'll. Um, you know, I've had it too long. Yeah. I've gone through. Long time. I've gone through too much, really. <laughs> to. Uh, Part of the family. Part of the family. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, she goes. She goes as well as she looks. They're Does beautiful. She? Brilliant. Yes. Well, thank yes. you for sharing that with me today. Thank you very much, and I hope you've had it's a good day. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you. Well, that's all we've got time for. I've dropped Charmaine off. It's now time for me to make a move. But thank you for watching. Please click on the like and subscribe. And if you want to be truly wonderful, go to www.patreon.com forward slash nwin and make a pledge not only can you help us make the programs but you get to see extra videos and you can enter yourself automatically into our first prize draw here's the details and here we are with a fantastic prize draw for our patreon supporters as a thank you for all your support all you have to do is go to www.patreon.com forward slash nwin and pledge one dollar three dollars or ten dollars which helps us make the programs your name then goes into the hat for this book when we reach 20 patreon supporters all the names go into the hat one dollar patrons going once three dollar patrons going three times and ten dollar patrons going ten times and we'll name the winner later in the in the year and it's morgan three wheeler the complete story by peter miller <laughs> And now, the news! Phoenix Automotive... Cut! Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Oh, Automotive developments have taken over the quantum thing. Alright, <laughs> ready? And now the news. Quantum Aut Oh boss. <laughs> 24. Right, here we go. And now, the news. Phoenix Automotive Developments have taken over the Quantum Project. I went down to take a look. And we're having that one. Yeah. <laughs>